Welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. Have you discovered a way to run FTL spaceships without an ESO core, Private Talavi? No, ma'am. Then consider this a serious assignment. Intel's expecting a Cerberus raid. Cerberus? Cerberus? They're a problem? I thought we were fighting Reapers, ma'am. Give it a week. You could be. Um, so, I was going to do the Cerberus fighter base, but I think I do kind of want to get the very last squad mate first. Which is not Kaden. Kaden, hey. I wondered where you went. He's not What's the up? last. I'm trying to wrap my head around what just happened. You sound angry. No, just not used to staring down the gun of someone I've worked with so closely. I went on one down and it's got me... I don't know. Okay. Talk to me. Let's have it. If I hadn't backed down first, I feel like you would have taken me out. Yes. Yes, I would have. Uh, I, I, I definitely would have uh, taken you up. But I would have felt really bad about it. I trusted you, and I knew you'd come around. That's all that matters. Main thing is we stop the coup and Cerberus is off the Citadel. Yeah, but sometimes the way a thing goes down does matter, Shepard. Later when you have to live with yourself. Knowing that you acted with integrity, and it matters. You're talking about Udina. He gave me no choice, so I took the shot. Any soldier would have done the same, including you. Okay. He would have if you didn't. Look, Shepard, there's, uh, there's another reason I'm here. Hackett offered me a position, but I'd turn it down in a second if there was a chance to join you in the Normandy again. Sure, having both human specters uh, on the same ship, that sounds like a great, uh, great idea. If you turn him down, he just becomes a war asset. But, yeah. Couldn't imagine meeting the Reapers without you. <sighs> Thank you, Commander. And Shepard, I need you to know that I'll never doubt you again. I get you back. Good to know. Welcome aboard, Major. Aye, aye, ma'am. So apparently a drop plot point was going to have... Well, actually. Shepard, I got Anderson patched in. I was just getting him up to speed. Odina? That SOB was always power hungry. But this? He wasn't in charge. Cerberus was just using him to take control of the Citadel. What the hell for? I don't know. Not yet. Could have been a lot worse. Shepard stopped the assassination attempt on Counselor Valorn. Kyline. What? Your assassin. I'll have Hackett send you my reports on him. Yeah, short story, be careful. Yeah, like I said, uh, Anderson, uh, Anderson and Sanders ran into Kai Lang in Mass Effect uh, Ascension. Novel. I take it you two have met. Kaylee Sanders and I had our share of run-ins with him. I shot him in both legs once. Thought that might be the end of him. But he should have begun on Omega even stronger. Elusive man patch him up? That'd be my guess. Given what they were able to do with you and Grayson, it's a safe bet Lang's even more dangerous now. Uh, Grayson was uh, another character. I think I talked about him. Uh, he was actually uh, implanted with Reaper tech, which caused him to start uh, running wild on uh, on Omega. I think it was Omega that, he's, uh, that he was running wild. Um, might have been somewhere else, but yeah, he was implanted with uh, Reaper Tech and it actually caused him to start running wild until he uh, until he was killed. I'll take whatever advantage I can get against these bastards. Their attempts may have had at least one unintended side effect. I received word from the Asari Counselor. They're requesting an update on the Crucible. 
Lang has them scared. Enough to send help? Mm. Yes, the Asari and Solarians are both throwing in their support now. How's your progress on the Crucible? Good. Our estimates suggest we've completed nearly 50% of the known work. So quickly? Once decoded, the schematics are designed in such a way that allows our scientists to easily translate the information. It's not Prothean-specific. Hmm. Are we any closer to understanding how to use it? That's still open for debate. Utilized in the right fashion, our scientists are convinced it can generate enough energy to destroy the Reapers. The question is, how will it dispense the energy? And in what form? You mean, how do you stop it from wiping us all out? Exactly. We think the catalyst is the key to determining how to focus its energy, how to direct its energy at the Reapers alone. I'm working on that. You'll find the answer, Shepard. I'll send you an update on the schematics. And in the meantime, we'll keep building. And we'll keep fighting. Make sure there's an Earth left to come back to. You've always trusted me. I won't let you down. We're still in this. The gods of war haven't given up on us yet. Good luck, both of you. Anderson out. Commander, the Turian fleet is stretched thin. We need more support ships. And the Quarians are willing to talk. Understood, sir. I'll look into it. That's where I go next. We've got reports of instability along the Geth border. Hack it out. So that's where I'm actually going to go next. Shepard, do you have a moment? A contact within Asari High Command was insistent I pass on a distress signal to you. Something they can't handle? From what I can tell, they sent several commando squads to investigate. None of them returned. They didn't ask me directly, but I think High Command is hoping you might help. What's your take on this? That they wouldn't ask for help if it wasn't important. The colony's coordinates are on the galaxy map. I'll try to figure out what's going on. Anyway, what I was about to say is that uh, a drop plot point uh, was that uh, Shepard was going to implant herself with Reaper Tech, uh, which would have uh, created a conflict with the Vermeer survivors. That bar's getting fuller. Uh, the Council created the Citadel Defense Force to support Shepard in the war against the Reapers. The CDF includes ships and soldiers from every Council race. Complements from a few species without official membership status have also quietly joined. After the attempted coup, no offer of assistance is being turned away by the Council and its advisors. An increase in refugees on the Citadel depleted resources that might otherwise might have otherwise gone to defense systems and personnel. Uh, so I think the uh, those people that I allowed on early on was that civilians volunteering at emergency clinics helped to save lives by processing patients, assisting doctors, and taking some of the burden off the Citadel's overtaxed medical staff. Warning people on the Citadel to prepare for the war has improved civilian readiness. Commander Shepard restored duty pay to spouses and family of active service for people, improving morale on the Citadel. A con artist exploiting refugees was thrown off the Citadel. Security improved on the docks as a result. Did I read all this before? Or a lot of this? Where housing was found for students from Grissom Academy too young to work on the Prothean device. These gifted teenagers have been helping, however, by dealing with any repetitive problems that can't be delegated to the eyes. Schematics, recovered by Commander Shepard, are helping CSEC easily locate and shut down active turrets left by servers on the Citadel. And uh, schematics of advanced biotic amplifiers from Grissom Academy increase the endurance of the Asari under fire. The oldest race in the galaxy is sending all the commandos and fleets it can spare. They're coordinated by Asari High Command, a core leadership of commandos and politicians from numerous Asari worlds. Many respected Asari scientists have used their long lifespans to become leading experts in their fields. Asari scholars often gain perspective on how cultural shifts affect society, grasping the larger contextual forces behind new pro proposals and using this to springboard into hypotheses years ahead of their time. The Asari science team working on the Crucible consists of some of the keenest scientific mavericks in the galaxy, eager to contribute to its construction. The Asari Second Fleet is largely composed of frigates and fighters, embodying the Asari's hit-and-run mindset with a nimble swarm rather than a slower collection of vessels. 
The second is normally dispatched to protect colonies from pirate raids, pirate raiders, or mercenary activity. The second fleet's fighter squadrons are intensely competitive, racing to break new records set by other teams, but unquestionably loyal to each other in a fight. A group of Asari mercenaries, sent by a matriarch friend of the commander, have volunteered their services. They'll ride with the second fleet, deploying to combat zones as required. The sixth fleet has more dreadnoughts than any other collection of ships in the Asari navy. An almost superstitious dread has grown around its entrance into conflict, as any war with the sixth has never remained small. It was the sixth fleet that grew, flew against the Rachni in the beginning of the Rachni Wars, and it was the sixth fleet that liberated the first colony under siege in the Krogan Rebellions. Unfairly or not, its service people have a reputation for being sober, serious, and humorless. Nevertheless, the Sixth Fleet is a welcome sight for any ally when it arrives. And the Destiny Ascension is the flagship of the Citadel Fleet, a powerful Asari dreadnought unlike any other vessel in the galaxy. Captained by Matriarch Ladanya, the, the Destiny Ascension evacuated the Council during the 2183 Battle of the Citadel, but was crippled by attacking Geth. Alliance fleets came in, taking heavy fire, but saving the Ascension and the Council from destruction. The Asari have repaired and upgraded the Dreadnought's shielding and firepower, committing the formidable ship to the fight against the Reapers. Uh, an Alliance Rear Admiral once unfairly dismissed the Solarian Third Fleet as nothing more than an overabundance of spy planes. While the Solarians rely heavily on gathering intelligence in any war, the Third Fleet's firepower is comparable to any other major naval force. Uh, its vessels use the latest Guardian defense systems, with improved tracking al algorithms to handle a greater number of projectiles than older models. Even its scouting flotillas have been armed with hull-mounted Thanex cannons, developed in conjunction with the Turian military. Smart of them. And the Turian Navy has the most dreadnoughts of any known species in the Milky Way. The Turian hierarchy limited production of these ships only because the Treaty of Ferrixen strictly controls the number of dreadnoughts due to their destructive capabilities. The Turian Sixth Fleet is technically classified as a peacekeeping fleet. Before the Reapers, it was chiefly used to patrol the space around the Citadel. Now it's ready to fly to areas trying to fight off the invasion. Indeed. We never really find out why. Commander, I've got a lead on something interesting. Have you got a minute? Jeez. Everybody's got stuff for Commander, me. Commander, I've found something you need to see. What have you got? A group of Cerberus scientists cut ties and fled. Perhaps they finally realized they were on the wrong side. We don't know what they were researching, but they were among the elusive man's top scientists. They could help build the Crucible. Maybe we could recruit them. Lots of Cerberus people think they're doing the right thing. I know I did. And you were right, Commander. Whatever crimes Cerberus is committing now... I was on Horizon when the Collectors attacked. Ooh, really? You'll recall I mentioned growing up in the Terminus systems. I was visiting my family at home. While the Alliance was running studies, you were saving me and my family. Has the Alliance tried to Glad make to contact help. with the scientists? They've been unable to find them, but they're searching. As is Cerberus. I've been monitoring Cerberus communications. I've charted signal frequency from various Cerberus cells by location and cross-referenced known ship movements. You found them? I believe so, yes. Nice work. Put it on the map and I'll give it a look. Thanks for your time, Commander. So... Yeah, I saved the trainer. That's pretty cool. Commander. It's a whole lot of missions all suddenly becoming available. Damn, I could really use something to shoot right now. So Cerberus wanted to go into politics, huh? Nice job shutting those assholes down. Yep. Didn't you used to work for those assholes? Something about leather seats. I worked for Cerberus when they were vigilantes helping the helpless. Now they're a little too mainstream. 
and evil. The important thing is that you kicked their asses. Indeed and I did. Aiden's back. He even remembered the first rule of serving on the Normandy. Don't shoot the commander. <laughs> Go easy on Caden. He's been through a lot. Yeah, like drawing a gun on a superior officer, nearly getting the council killed. That's not gonna look good on the yearly performance review. Commander. Hello, Shepard. What's on your mind, Edie? The destruction of the Reaper on Tachunka. It is rare for a technologically superior force to be destroyed by an inferior one. Yeah, so now all we need is a gun that fires Thresher Maws. That was a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shepard. I was contemplating. The Reapers are more fallible than they proclaim. Despite its best efforts, the one on Tachunka was destroyed by a worm. This has caused me to reassess the probable period of time before I am non-functional. You're worried Morbid. about dying? In a sense. My processing power is consumed with calculations to help us combat the Reapers. But I can run those scenarios with the rest of the crew. May I ask you another question that troubled Jeff? Here we go again. What is the purpose of synthetic life? Yeah. <laughs> I really like that bit about uh, a gun that fires Thresher Maws. Also, yeah, that was a joke. Like I said, that uh, that was a popular enough line from two that it uh, ended up being a bit of a running gag in three. It's not that different from organic life. A free-willed synthetic chooses what it wants. But the purpose of organic life is to preserve itself long enough to replicate copies of its genes in succeeding generations. Meh. My purpose is not so clear. The other successful synthetic life forms that I have examined for comparison are the Geth and the Reapers. I mean, not everyone wants to have Gets. Reproduction isn't all there is. We find meaning in the work we do. Good deeds we accomplish. Love. I see. I will search my files on the biographies of humans to see if prominent figures follow the pattern you suggest. It appears many humans did in fact do so. That was quick. Gotta love quantum computing. Shepard, I will alter my processing power to give priority to your stated goals. Duty, altruism, love. Wait, wait, you're just gonna turn yourself good? Can you do that? It should take some time. Apparently. If I have further questions, I will speak with you again. Thank you. Yeah, apparently she can just turn herself Are again. you and Caden okay? The last time he saw that body, it wasn't exactly pleasant. I have informed him of the situation. He is taking it well. Good. Hello, Shepard. Speaking of Caden, let's go, uh... Check in on him now that he's back in the ship. Jeez, I might end up. Uh... Commander, Doctor Chuck was sent word that she'd like to speak with you down in the med bay. Jeez! Everyone wants a minute of my time. Oh. Shepard. Hell of a day. Udina loses his mind. The citadel almost falls, and you almost had to put down a friend. Got a little tense there. If it had come down to it, could you have pulled the trigger? I don't see how. We start killing our friends and war turns into murder. But it doesn't always give us the easy way out, does it? At least Caden didn't have to join Ash. Let's hope she's looking out for us. This was her fight, too. Bottom left there. Thane Krios. Add it to the board. So, minor spoiler, but there will be one more name added to the board. seems so calm from here. 
people going through hell in a million different ways. Out there. And I want to be fighting alongside them, but... I want to be here. You know? Sure. Thinking of anyone specific? I heard from my mom, Shepard. My dad is, um... He's M.I.A. <sighs> He's presumed. Tell me what dead. happened. You said they got out of Vancouver. He left mom at the orchard and reported for active duty. It's all we know, but it's, uh, it's enough. Mm. She's Rough. alone in this now. In all this. I feel for you, Caden. And I'm glad you told me. There's strength in camaraderie. And empathy. Thanks. You're right. I don't know how you do it, Shepard. Keeping it all together like you do. Earth is always in the back of my mind. So use it. That's how I cope. I think about how Earth looked. And how it's gonna look when we get back. Guns blazing the whole galaxy behind us. <laughs> yeah. And my students. Well, whatever they are. I know they're kicking ass. On Earth or somewhere. You know, when this war is over, there's gonna be one hell of a reunion party. Hell yeah. Dancing in the streets, hugging and crying. My mom's always wanted to travel off planet. I think I'll take her. Thanks for coming by. Good to have you back, Caden. I'll mention this now, um, so obviously if you saved Ashley in uh, Mass Effect 1, then she's the one you need here. Uh, her writing in this game is garbage. Absolute garbage. She got nothing. She does not get any great interactions. It is pathetic how they did her in this game. There was supposed to be a conversation between Shepard and Ashley about uh, Shepard's death and resurrection, because Ashley is a you know, Christian. Uh, so there was going to be sort of a conversation about that. Uh, it got cut. No idea why. It would have been a great conversation. It would have been one of the very, very, very few times in the two games where... Shepard actually thinks about uh, thinks and talks about what happened but they cut it in favor of doing absolutely nothing with her instead hey I bumped into Edie in the hall scared the shit out of me <laughs> you could have warned me she Sorry. looks good though <laughs> Hayden you you perv getting settled not much to unpack. Left Earth in a hurry. Just the clothes on my back and a few things I've picked up in the Citadel. Kinda like it. Living lean. Cerberus didn't cut corners rebuilding this place. There's a whole lot of credits in here. Can't wait to get back out there. Can't wait to get back out there. Oh, there may you I are. Speak with you? Oh, whoops. Commander, I cut her off. An opportunity has come to my attention that may interest you. What's going on, Doctor? Refugees arrived at the Citadel recently in possession of military grade medical supplies and equipment. In reviewing our inventories, I determined we have an excess of medical supplies to treat contagion, exposure, and malnutrition. Not very They're useful in the ship. Injured soldiers, and we have supplies to help suffering refugees. Precisely. Perhaps you could ply your charms to broker a trade. Isn't this something you could do yourself? War profiteering is running rampant, and these refugees are wary of the Alliance military. They didn't trust me. But you are Commander Shepard, the hero. You could persuade them. I'll find the refugees as soon as I can. Speak with Tactus. Many of the refugees near the Citadel docks look to him for leadership. Thank you, Commander. 
With access to their equipment and materials, I believe I could increase the effectiveness of our Medigel. Helpful. So much to do now. All these conversations, all in one. your orders, I have the latest reports on the Council, Doctor. Their security is in disarray, but it would still be weeks before we could attempt to position any agents in their personal staff. And it's far too risky after Odina's coup. Postpone those deployments. At once. I like how Liar is not even like. Oh, it would be wrong to it would be wrong to uh, install our agents in the council staff. She doesn't care about the morality; it's just the practicality. Audio recording from Councillor Gugier's Senate office. Secretary Phillips, the emergency fund's gone, sir. We don't have the credits to hire enough ships to evacuate the colony before the Reapers get here. Not with the prices their captains are asking for. Gugier, what about the military? They left an hour ago. They said. They said it's too much of a risk to come back. Did they? Yes, sir. Here. This... Is this a passkey, sir? And an inventory? Phillips, I am authorizing you on behalf of the city senate to seize any and all EZO stockpiles in our treasury in order to secure safe passage for our citizens on any available ships. These look like private private stockpiles. Senate members' stockpiles. I'm foregoing re-election. Now get us those ships. Yes, sir. I do really like the uh, foregoing re-election. <laughs> Get on that guy. Hello again. Hello again. Greetings, Commander. All right, so Liara's got nothing to say about the whole coup. Traitors are the worst form of enemy. In our cycle, we would remove their limbs one by one and offer them a choice. Eat their own flesh or starve. Your politician deserved far worse than a bullet. And if the other human had not seen reason, his death would be certain too. There is only one enemy in this war. Reapers. No others will be tolerated. I mean, I didn't really have time to do more than shoot Udina. But hey, at least I got to shoot him. That's nice. I would like to visit the Citadel sometime, when it is not infested with traitors. I have heard about the Kyleng human you encountered. It is good to have a name for the enemy I will enjoy killing most. I mean, we barely met the guy. But he is very annoying. Uh, and uh, he'll get worse. Yes. Like I said. Kai Lang will get so much more hateable. Not for the reasons that uh, Bioware wanted it all. Shepard? Nothing to report. Commander? Like, I know what they were going for with Kai Lang, and they failed. Uh, you hate Nothing him for the wrong reasons. The Citadel in flames. A brazen attack by Cerberus, repelled by CSEC. And me. Alliance Marines explain the Council Fleet's delayed response. We speak with the brave men and women who fought the good fight in the battle space. Commander, I've got some questions about the coup, but I'm online with my producer right now. Can we set up an interview in your cabin? Uh, so that's a conversation we're going to have to have. All right. You know, next time we're at the Citadel, I think I might hit a nightclub. You should join me. Sounds good. Never thought I'd be doing a combat drop onto the Citadel. I can't believe Udina. Great example to the other races, huh? Is everything okay, Shepard? Hey, Commander. I knew Udina was a dirty bastard, but I never would have guessed he was that rotten. This whole war is loco. I mean, can't they all see how we need to work together? When people are scared, they're slow to trust. Sure, but... Ah, what's the point? Look, just so you know, I've got a new shoot-first, ask-questions-later policy when it comes to politicians. Fair enough. 
Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? Meanwhile, I continue to dislike the uh, the sort of propaganda of this game with soldiers good, civilian leaders bad. I don't know, I just don't like it. Did I pick up again that I haven't, uh... No, I didn't. Right, I considered... I was considering using the phalanx, wasn't I? is cheap enough. That should be me back at a uh, 200%. Yep. A lot more shots. Lots more DACA, as uh, they say in Warhammer, which I've never actually played, but I know a little bit about it. Venture. So yeah. Nice uh, damage upgrade from the uh, Avenger. Not that I really need it on the difficulty I'm playing on, frankly. Alright, I'll talk to Allers. And then I should have time to, uh... Trainer, can you send Diana up? She wanted an interview. Right away, Commander. Ready for a chat, Commander? I'm ready. Commander, it's no secret that Council Space has suffered some serious losses to the Reapers lately. Now Cerberus has struck directly at the seat of our government. If something as small as a human terrorist organization can hit the Citadel, is anywhere safe? Cerberus has limited resources. This coup attempt was likely the best they could do. And it cost them a lot of money and troops. A little Hopefully. fear is understandable, but it can't paralyze you. They've failed as many times as they've succeeded. More. But humanity has lost its counselor. Eh. The Alliance Parliament is destroyed, and the Prime Minister's dead. The line of succession is getting pretty short. 
How long do you expect any new Alliance administration to last? Leaders will rise. You can't lose hope. Our enemies won't rest until they've taken the last human being. Until then, we're not beaten. Right now, it's everyone's duty to step up. All right. Now a question from Thessia. Commander, during your tribunal, some said you had Cerberus ties. Yeah, she's not living that day. Thanks for your time, Commander. This is Diana Allers for Battlespace. Good night and stay strong. Be careful, Commander. You keep feeding me like this and I'll follow you home. Yeah, that's flirting with her and no. No. I think we're just fine in front of the camera. Oh, did you think? Uh, of course you did. Me and my big mouth. I'd better get out of here before I send another wrong signal. See ya, Commander. Uh, wrong signal, yeah, sure. And yeah, now we got Caden finally. 25% power damage. Shields, 25%. Weapon damage, 25%. Power recharge fee, 25%. That's probably my favorite of his armors in terms of the look. But, gonna go with this one for the damage. Alright. I'll read all those emails another time. For right now, let's go get our last squad mate. And then we can do all of the other stuff. Oh, for come on! Commander Shepard. Jeez, just freaking everybody wants my time. Shepard. I was hoping you'd check in again. You okay? Been putting my old academy training to use. Organizing the resistance. You know, you've got quite a fan club back here. Any news we hear about the Normandy gives hope to the guys in the trenches. I know what that's like, fighting in the dark. I'm glad we're making a difference. It's more than that. A lot of these people have never held a gun in their life. When they heard that you managed to get the Torians and Krogan to cooperate, that was a shot in the arm, Shepard. Of the one thing we're in short supply around here. Faith. That any of us will live to see another day. How bad is it? It could be worse, but not much. Can you still coordinate any kind of counterattack? We're hitting the Reapers every chance we get. Mostly guerrilla-style hit and runs. But it's not enough. It's time we started focusing our efforts. Where? London. Something big is happening there. Our networks in the UK say the Reapers have arrived in huge numbers. I don't like the sound of that. Any more details? No. And that scares the hell out of me. Well, the Crucible will scare the hell out of the Reapers. We're counting on it. Oh, and Shepard. I meant what I said earlier about Kai Lang. The Reapers may seem like our biggest threat, but take it from me. Lang is a vicious bastard. Don't underestimate him. Noted. Then I'll let you get back to it. We need whatever good news you can send our way. That is enough. Yeah. Kai Lang in Mass Effect Ascension actually is a vicious bastard. Uh, I'll read his dossier uh, in the next episode. But uh, he is, like, really, really cool. Come on, Dad. In, the, uh, in that novel. Elsewhere, not so much. I'll mention this as well. Um, oh, hey. 
we're back here. Yeah, I may as well also, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I've completely forgotten what I was uh, about to say. Oops. Let's hit Mott. Nothing. Wow. Damn it. Alright, well, that's, uh, disappointing that I just wasted my fuel. Cool, cool. Oh, I was gonna mention, uh, yes. May as well mention that there is a new thing available. The, uh... Citadel DLC is now available as well. Fair to just uh, throw that out there. This diplomatic frigate is like no quarian ship on record. It's closed relatively low temperature and it appears to be back in deep in the air how the Quarians developed this high-tech vessel is unknown, but its hailing frequencies are open and welcoming messages are being typed into the Normandy. Tally stole our, uh, stealth. Stole our stealth system. I actually was all worried, and back in the first game, I actually was all worried, and Rear Admiral, uh, Mikhailovich was worried about, uh, about Gareth and Rex stealing, uh, stealing technology, and it turns out it was Tally all along. Commander Shepard, a pleasure to see you again, though I wish it were under better circumstances. I'd hope for your support in the fight against the Reapers. What's going on? Seventeen days ago, with precision strikes on four Geth systems, the Quarians initiated the war to retake our home world. Which was a clear violation of our agreement with the Council to avoid provoking the Geth. A treaty Too violation is nothing compared to recovering our home world and advanced AI technology. Your home world? You mean Renok? Correct, Commander. 300 years ago, we lost our world to our own AI creations, the Geth. After we attempted to kill them, we didn't try to kill them, Chorus. We tried to deactivate them. It wasn't murder. Uh, may as well just mention all this here. Uh, Ron. Shella Ron is voiced once again by Shore Agdahu. Uh, Chorus is voiced by Martin Jarvis. Uh, Zen is voiced by Claudia Black. Same person who voices Athena. And, uh, Han, or Han, Han? Yeah, Han Geral. Uh, Han Geral is voiced by Simon Templeman. No, it was murder. <laughs> Commander, the Quarians never intended to create a true AI. It was an accident. Which you chose to correct by trying to kill them. Don't bother. 
Admitting we were wrong would undercut the justification for this suicidal invasion plan. You're throwing yourselves at the Geth? Again? And this time, we may have destroyed our people for good. We'd driven the Geth back to their home system when this signal began broadcasting to all Geth ships. The Reapers. Under Reaper control, the Geth are significantly more effective. Our fleet is pinned in the home system. If we're going to win, we're... Win? You insisted on involving the civilian ships, Admiral Geralt. We need to retreat or we'll lose the life ships. Where's the signal coming from? Here. A Geth Dreadnought. It can outgun anything we've got, and it's heavily defended. The Normandy stealth drive can get us in undetected. I could board, then disable the Reaper command signal. Yes. Cutting off the signal should throw the Geth into complete disarray. And while they're confused, you get to a mass relay and retreat. Good. Our civilian ships have seen too much fighting already. Are you certain you can disable the signal? Of we'll course get I am. there safely, Admiral. Our newest Admiral has also volunteered to offer technical expertise. No surprise here. Tali Zora Vas Normandy, reporting for duty. <laughs> Glad you could make it, Tally. Vas Normandy. Already a team to hit that dreadnought. Thank you, Commander. I like the Vas Normandy part. Admiral? It's mostly a formality. I'm an expert on the Geth. From how many she's killed? And she yeah, talked to Legion. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. If I'd known it was this bad, I would have come sooner. You've had your own troubles. I'm sorry about Earth. We've got the largest fleet in the galaxy. If you can help us, we'll hit the Reapers with everything we've got. Or however much is left from this stupid war. I thought you'd support the invasion. No. After talking to Legion, I thought maybe there was a chance for peace. So why help them? I'm an admiral. People look to me for guidance. Public disagreement would divide the fleet. I'll get your people out of here safely, Tally. Thanks, Shepard. And just so you know, I need to keep things strictly business in front of the admirals. If you'd like to catch up, let's talk somewhere private. Sure thing. I'm ready to hit that dreadnought whenever you are. Uh, let's talk to Tally. Tally, I'm free if you'd like to come up. I'll just be a moment. I might not get to do the mission that I expected to do, with all the talking I've already done. Thanks for asking me up. I couldn't talk freely in front of Ron. You okay? No, no, I'm really not. Seventeen million lives are riding on me, and I don't know if I can save them. You're doing everything you can. If the fleet falls, it won't be because of you. I helped my father and... and Zen's ideas? The new tech that made an invasion too good to pass up? That's based on my father's work. If they die because of me, if... if I don't... We'll get them out of there safely, Tally. I couldn't do this without you, Shepard. I feel like I'm bluffing, trying to convince them that the Admiral's daughter knows what she's doing. I think that's what leadership. The Admiral. I know. And at least now, I can push back against the worst ideas. That's why I accepted the position. And because of you. Me? When they offered me this position, I asked myself what you'd do. I thought you'd take the chance to make things better. That probably sounds stupid. It's just, I know I'm not really qualified for this. Sure You're she doing is. fine, Tally. And thanks. I should get back before the Admirals get into trouble again. I'll talk to you later. Uh, Tally voiced again by Ash Sroka. Energy drain. Already got a uh, power. Actually, before I go talk to the admirals again, yep. 
power damage. And yeah, power sabotage, which is actually useful in this game. Uh, combat drone, which is uh, m much upgraded. Energy drain, which is uh, good. And Corian ma machinist. 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 Which is, uh, yeah, for passive and pretty good. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, and I uh, haven't used her yet, so it doesn't show what weapons she has equipped yet. Uh, obviously, though, in terms of weapons, she is uh, pistol and shotguns, again. So I'll be giving her uh, probably the claymore. Though the Grawl Spike Thrower is tempting. Uh, anyway, so her main thing, power damage, 25%. Sadly, can't really get a good look at uh, the single power. Recharge the 25%. Weapon damage 25%. Power damage 25%. Oh, she's only got three suits. Everyone else has two. Or everyone else has four, except for Javik with two. Huh. Alright, so... Won't be doing the mission that I uh, expected to be doing, so... Game night. From Samantha Trainer, Commander. Thanks for taking the time to speak with the civilian. I'd love to see how Commander Shepard kills time between missions. Why don't you give me a call if you'd like to grab drinks in your cabin? I promise a night of fun and games. From Center Block, Dear Shepard. Changing my identity was good advice. Once again, you saved my life. After we last spoke, I overheard some refugees mention Cerberus. Then they said my name. I freaked out until I recognized their voices. Close friends of mine who've defected in disguise and on the run, just like me. They are talented engineers, Shepard, who could help with the war effort. I've attached contact information aboard to whoever could use their help. You can trust them. Helpful. Dear Commander Shepard, my name is Jessica Frome. You saved my life on Benning. I've lost so many friends in all this, but I find hope in the idea that their memory lives on in me. I know I'm just one woman, but I wanted to let you know you're making a real difference. Did that one? The networks are going to wall. Uh, the networks are going wall to wall with coverage of the attack on the Citadel. Everyone's asking questions about Udina's death. Can I get an hour or so with you to talk about what happened? I'm thinking your cabin rather than the conference room, so we don't get interrupted. I heard you knew the council personally. If you need some time alone or don't want to talk about it, just say the word. Uh, from Jack, the students are kicking ass and taking names. They're keeping them on short rotation so they don't burn out. So we end up with lots of shore leave. Next time you hit the Citadel, come by Purgatory. I'll be there if I'm not blowing shit up in the field. Uh, a and a news article on Cerberus. Uh, Elysium. Yes, this is a, an interesting one. Uh, an evacuation shuttle nearly destroyed as, attempted, as it attempted to escape the Reaper-occupied colony of Elysium was reportedly saved after a lone biotic worker intervened. The shuttle was carrying children who drew higher numbers on the colony's evacuation lottery, meaning they were not eligible to board the first wave of shuttles leaving the planet. The shuttle was their shuttle was saved when their when the biotic identified by authorities as Aresh Agdashlu. Yep, guy who uh, we encountered on Pragya. Uh, engaged Reaper forces that were preventing it from taking off. Agdashlu had a history of drug abuse and criminal activity, and claimed to have survived a Cerberus camp on Pragya as a child. Witnesses said he killed several dozen Reaper creatures before he was overwhelmed, providing the shuttle just enough time to fly clear. Good on you, Arash. Glad to have spared him. From Erdnot Bakara. I'm writing you from the Kelphic Valley of Tachanka. I wish you were here to see this. I'm watching Krogan pour in from across our entire planet, so many of them that I've lost count. They've all heard the news. We are finally free. The age of suffering is over. Never again will Krogan be afraid to give birth. Never again will they fear the pain and heartache it might bring. While I don't know what fate ultimately has in store for my people, I can promise you your decision to believe in us will not be in vain. We will fight the Reapers for more than glory. We will fight them because we know there is a future for us after victory. The rest of my life will be devoted to traveling to Chanka and speaking aloud the words no Krogan has heard for nearly 2,000 years. There is reason to hope. This I owe to you, Commander. This I will never forget. No, uh, Durlesh Mole from Adrian Victus. All oh, right, 
Cerberus just ambushed a Turian cruiser full of high-ranking hierarchy officials. The cruiser managed to escape, but its location was top secret. Cerberus couldn't have located that ship without inside information, and the only other person who knew the cruiser's position was Volus Ambassador Din Korlak. Uh-oh. I've heard ugly rumors of a bounty up for his head. Yeah, you may remember him. My advisors insist I can't bring these accusation, accusations against Korlak and myself. I admit they're right. The Turian and Volus economies are tightly intertwined, and now isn't the time for pol the political crisis that would result. But the security of our fleet is at stake. I ask that you investigate Korlak in your capacity as a specter, and find out if he is, indeed, a Cerberus mole. I forwarded information on his last known location to the specter office on the Citadel. Uh, hey, Commander. Just wondering if you've got some time in the near future. Nothing critical. Just want to chat. Uh, Shepard, as promised, here's what we have on Kai Lang. Uh, Alliance Records, Kai Lang's dossier. Uh, date of enlistment, November 14th, 2172. Age on enlistment, 16. Credentials, faked. Tours of duty, term 2172. Terminus systems, patrol and reconnaissance. 73, Exodus cluster, patrol and reconnaissance. Reprimanded for taking medals from dead enemy officers. Sentence reduced in light of previous exemplary service record. So already we see that he's kind of a dick. 74. Raid of Ention. Recommended for Systems Alliance Medal of Valor. 75. Kite's Nest. Tactical Reconnaissance. Accepted into Interplanetary Combatives Academy. 2176. Received N7 designation from Interplanetary Combatives Academy. So he is a, a, an N7, just like Shepard. Dishonorably discharged and imprisoned after degree or after charge of first degree murder. So what happened there is he got into a bar fight with a Krogan and he killed the Krogan with a knife. Yeah, uh This fight with a Krogan and he and he didn't just win, he killed the dude. He killed the Krogan. So dangerous, dangerous guy. Cerberus activities. Intel and Kai Lang's activities after joining Cerberus is spotty. What is known is that the elusive man arranged for Lang's escape from prison, employing him, an oper employing him as an operative for the next 10 years. Lang is now believed to be the elusive man's most trusted agent, working as an infiltrator and assassin. His cybernetic modifications appear to include Cerberus' phantom class implants. He is intended to be like a direct foil to Shepard. Um... You know, an N7 who worked for Cerberus and all that. So he's very much intended to be Shepard's match, Shepard's foil. They don't really get that across the way that they should have. It's a shame um, that he's so badly written in this game and that uh, the scenes where he appears make everyone else badly written as well. Um uh, so yeah, and here is another DLC. Commander Shepard, I'm ordering the Normandy into dry dock on the Citadel for much needed repairs. She's seen a lot of action lately and needs a little TLC. A small army of techs will take care of the details once you arrive, so let's get your crew out of there. You're all on shore leave. That's an order. We need everybody at their best. One more thing. Admiral Anderson has an apartment on the wart. Head over there when you arrive. I hear it's a nice place. Uh... I won't be doing this just now. I might do this after... After the current arc with the uh, Quarians. Um, I feel like narratively it makes sense there. Most people will tell you that the best time to do it is as basically the last thing you do before the end game. Um... And there are parts of the uh, Citadel DLC that you do need uh, that are best to wait until uh, until right before the end game. There are parts of that DLC that it's best to wait for. Um, but I I like you'll see why. But I like doing it after the Quarian arc. Um, I'll explain why when I do it. 
Interview is aired, and it's getting rerun all over the place. You and your household name. Camera loves me. Yep. Cleaning up the Citadel. Hell of a mess down here. Could have been a lot worse, though. Thanks. Appreciate your insights. Thank you for discussing my questions. Speaking with you results in better advice than searching the extranet. Yep, never use the internet for advice. 74,238,489 processes assigned. I am devoting additional resources to studying Reaper movements. We are going to beat them, Shepard. Glad we didn't have to add a name to this wall, Shepard. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we've lost too many friends, yep. Send shark bits. Healing up. Bored. Grunt. Seriously, you're impressively off. Thanks for helping me out with shore leave. Also, you're still a crappy dancer. Jack. She actually likes me. Thanks for coming by, Commander. Liquid courage wasn't cutting it. Me is the old-fashioned kind. Still thinking about everything. I got my things and set up on the starboard observation deck. Come by whenever you like, okay? Doors open. Best place to be. Thanks for listening. The only place I'd rather be right now is Earth, and if I can't be there, I'm glad I'm here. That refugee video. The video is coming together amazingly, Commander. This is going to get people stirred up. The Normandy still makes the same noises. Thanks for having me up to your cabin. It felt great to escape the war, at least for a little while. I'll mention that uh, this bit about the Normandy noises... We'll come back to that. Jeez. Okay, so no missions getting done uh, this time, because I'm at an hour already. And I've still got a uh, couple of conversations to do. And I'll probably end up... Uh, and I've got some journal to read, codex to read. Trainer, if you're not doing anything, I've got a few hours free. Would you like to come up? Jeez, there's a lot of talking Your after the Citadel. gorgeous. I've seen apartments smaller than this. Oh, an actual shower. The faucets in the women's bathroom are crap, by the way. In any event, I thought you might be in the mood to play. Chess? I bought a board on the Citadel. Gooey interface, not nearly as much fun as real pieces. But I hoped you might give me some pointers. Uh, this... You can initiate a uh, romance through this, not... This alone will initiate That's the romance. Fine. I figured you'd be more interested in a shower. I didn't realize that was an option. It's an option. Well, just give me a moment to grab my things. And for some reason, she showers in her underwear. Ah, uh, hot water and room to stretch. I could get lost in here. Mm. Oh, it's like a week's worth of stress is washing off. And the timing's perfect. I was hoping to look nice to somebody. Hot date lined up? Hopefully more than just that. I play for keeps. Sounds serious. That depends on whether she's interested. Yeah, uh, this obviously initiates a romance with her, but I am faithful. I am loyal to Liara. Well, good luck. Holler if you need anything. Oh, will do. Thanks again, Shepard. No problem. Take as long as you like. Yep. And Sorry. don't think this saves you from our chess match. <laughs> Just give me a minute to dry my hair. Yep. Sorry, trainer. She is not interested. Ha! Oh, come on. <laughs> My word, Commander. It's almost as though you wanted to spare your pawns the indignity of living under my regime. <laughs> in real life, that tactic would have worked. Well, in real life, one doesn't move on an 8x8 eight eight square grid. You know what I mean. The pawns are infantry. A good infantry line like the Krogan can take a charge like that. That reminds me of a joke. What's the difference between Commander Shepard and a Krogan? One is an unstoppable juggernaut of head-butting destruction. 
And the other doesn't have a smart-ass comm officer to keep her in line. Ooh, that's even better than the number of testicles punchline. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't run back to the lab, trainer. Thanks. So, rematch? Hell yes. Man, I think I... Well, as long as they're already glitching at it, I may as well feed them. I like the number of testicles punchline, I think. James, I've got some time if you want to talk privately. On my way. Hey, man, how's it going? Good, James. You? Good, good. Wow. So this is what I can look forward to when I get my own command. <laughs> you want your own ship, Vega? Yeah, maybe one day. When I'm old and I can't fight worth shit anymore. You just come up here to make fun of your commander. Yep. Sorry, Lola. I guess maybe I got some things on my mind. I, I wanted to get your opinion on something. Shoot. What did you do when they asked you to join the N7 program? I, I joined. Mean, was it a no-brainer for you, or did you think about it before accepting? The N7 program is a big deal, but it's also a big commitment. I hear that. You get the best training, best equipment, best assignments. And they expect the best in return. Yes, they do. Why are you asking? Well... Even all the shit that's going on, somebody, somewhere, managed to track me down and forward an N7 commendation. It's dated the same day the Reapers attacked Earth. You don't sound too thrilled. Well, aside from the fact that there won't be an N7 program if we don't win this war, I just... Being a soldier is the only thing I've ever been really good at. And not because I try. Hell, I'd have kicked my ass out years ago. Last <laughs> time I had a command, I lost almost everyone. And they promoted me for it. I guess I'm just not sure if I'm ready to lead again. I don't know if I want that responsibility. You mentioned that before. What went wrong? What didn't go wrong? We were out on patrol, checking on some strange readings. Then the collectors hit. But they hit the colony first. By the time we got back, most of the colonists had been subdued or abducted, including our CO, Captain Tony. So you were in charge? Yeah. We laid low for a bit, waiting for a chance to strike, but before we could, we were betrayed. One of the colonists turned out to be a Cerberus spy working with the Collectors. Yeah. I had no choice. I killed him and destroyed the Collectorship. We yeah, got ugly. Job. We lost most of the colonists and all but one of my squad. Not exactly a textbook operation. Uh... I think the only one he managed to save was uh, an Asari that he had a uh, thing for. Uh, she happened to have uh, information that was uh, on the collectors, which is why he saved her. But, yeah. You can't blame yourself for being put in a tough situation. And if you were promoted, then something must have gone right. Sure, but... If you'd saved them all, would things have worked out better? I... I don't know. I don't think so. The right choice is usually not the easy one. Yeah. Did you know that before you joined the N7? Yep. That's why I was asked. And that's why they asked you. There is not a single N7 that hasn't sacrificed either themselves or their soldiers at some point. So you think I should accept? Hell yeah. So when we survive this, that's a no-brainer. You're a damn good soldier, Vega. Don't waste that opportunity. I'll think about it. Seriously. If you don't mind, maybe don't mention this to anyone else. Of course not. Gracias. Well, I think I better get back to the hangar. Things here it's a little too soft for me. The bed's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Are you flirting with me, Lola? <laughs> I'm going, I'm going. Thanks again, Trevor. Anytime. I do like that he uh, calls you Shepard when it's serious. Thanks for the talk. Thanks for showing me the shiny digs. Still not sure if N7's right for me, but the talk helps. 
Want to play again? Thanks for having me up, Commander. And for being a good sport when I destroyed you at chess. And yeah, the uh, bonus powers are coming in fast and... Fast and heavy now. Commander? Commander? All right, talk to people in here. Hey, Tally. That dreadnought is tearing through our fleet. Let me know when you're ready to hit it. So how did you end up back with your fleet, Tally? Uh, how when do you think? When the war started, the Admiralty Board asked for my help. I had more recent contact with the Geth than most of my people. They hadn't filled the spot on the board left by my father. I was invited in. It's just a technicality. I'm far too young to be a real admiral. You are a real admiral. Don't sell yourself short, Tally. The board needed your expertise. You needed the authority that comes with rank. How did the Thanks, war Ron. with the Geth get started anyway? Admiral Zen developed a scanning countermeasure that interferes with Geth active scans. It's like a flashbang grenade. It effectively crippled the Geth ships in combat. My fleet couldn't pass up the chance to attack. Could we use it to fight the Reapers? It only works against the Geth, unfortunately. Their AI lets them use extremely detailed LADAR pings. Zen's countermeasure overwhelmed them with garbage data. And it's useless now that the Reapers have upgraded their processing power. Of course. How is it being back with the fleet? Right now, it's exhausting. I'm an admiral in the middle of a war. I just want us to get out of this alive. Everything else can wait. When this is over, I could use your help. I can't, Shepard. If we survive this, we'll have a home world. My people need me. You could help your people's home world by fighting the Reapers. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not thinking that far ahead yet. So what about Legion? It returned to Geth space after you turned yourself into the Alliance. And you haven't seen it since? I... Uh, Legion and I sent a few messages. I was hoping we could try negotiation. Cool. But I was outvoted three to two. Admiral Chorus was the only one who believed it would work. Any idea where Legion is now? No. In our last message, it told me that the Geth were having trouble reaching consensus. And then nothing? Maybe it was fighting the Reaper takeover? Or maybe it didn't want to give intel to an enemy? I could have warned it about the invasion. I didn't. You'd have been betraying your own people. I never wanted to be an admiral. Talk to you later, Tally. Sure. Shepard, the fleet is under heavy fire. We need to hit the dreadnought. The way they hand over things I'd is like so weird. I'd like to know weird. about your patrol fleet. In peacetime, the patrol fleet managed navigation, internal security, and intership conflicts or crimes. Now, we mostly guard the heavy fleet's flank. It's mostly light frigates or fighters. Tell me about the civilian fleet. Our civilian ships, medical vessels, and live ships. Admiral Chorus coordinates them, though individual ships' captains still have power. In peacetime, they made up the bulk of our fleet. Now, our strength would even give the Turians pause. Tally said you had the largest fleet in the galaxy. The Turians have more dreadnoughts. Their overall military force is larger than our heavy fleet by far. But before we began this war, we jury rigged every Quarian ship in the flotilla for battle. Even our live ships have cannons. Yeah, that's a bad idea. You've converted them into dreadnoughts. That's a violation of the Treaty of Ferrixen. Why live ships have firepower comparable to a dreadnought? Their primary purpose is food cultivation. You think the Council will buy that technicality? Doesn't matter. Need be. I'll apologize once this war is over. And in the meantime, you're putting your civilians in danger. Yep. Not casually, Commander. We keep them off the front lines, but we'll do whatever we must to win. What can yeah. you tell me about Admiral Garrel's heavy fleet? 
It was our main military force before the war, comprised of all Korean vessels suited for sustained combat. It can't compare to the Turian forces, of course, but we have a number of heavy frigates and advanced fighter forces. Tally said you had the... Yeah. The Turians, but before we began this war. You think the Count... If need... And in the meantime, you... Not casually, Commander. We keep them off. Which fleet does Admiral Zen command? Special projects. It's not a fleet, per se. Just a few research vessels. Her technical breakthroughs have put us within striking distance of the home world. wonder what Han Garrel would have been in command of. I'll let you get or back not to Han. work. Thank you, Commander. Not Han Garrel. I mean, uh... Tally's dad. I wonder what Tally's dad would have been in charge of. All right. Commander Shepard's interview with Diana Allers about the attempted takeover of the Citadel noted Cerberus's tactical missteps, which improved the morale of Alliance ground forces. Kelly Chambers contacted several former Cerberus engineers, convincing them as a way to make up for their mistakes to come out of hiding and help build the Crucible. Appalled at how Cerberus has turned on humanity, these Cerberus deserters have thrown themselves into their new task with a passion. Tali yeah. Zora, a Quarian machinist, was born in 2161 on the live ship Raya. During her pilgrimage, a rite of passage in which Quarians proved their worth to the fleet, she recovered a Geth memory core that proved a rogue specter, Saron Arterius, was working with the Geth. As a consequence, Tali Zora became a crew member of the SSV Normandy, where she served under Commander Shepard during the Battle of the Citadel. Tali Zora returned to the migrant fleet following the destruction of the First Normandy. Soon after, the Admiralty Board sent her to the former Quarian colony of Hastrum to recover data on the planet's dying sun. Most of her team was killed when they fell under attack from the Geth. But Tali Zora herself was narrowly rescued by Shepard and the crew of the rebuilt Normandy. The Quarian rejoined Shepard to help oppose the Collector threat, but her current whereabouts are unknown. No, they're not. She's like 10 feet away from me. Jellix, the second planet in the Arai system, is a marginally habitable world of mountains. Okay, yeah. Tachanka. All right, I'll read those uh, another time. When I do the uh, fitting appropriate messages, or appropriate uh, missions. Cancer Udina's attempted coup will no doubt be analyzed for generations to come, but a clear picture is beginning to emerge. Udina had contacted Cerberus to coordinate what was intended to be a bloodless takeover of the Citadel, in which he would force the other counselors to grant him emergency powers so that he could command the Citadel fleet. He would then direct the fleet to liberate his homeworld, Earth. The plan fell apart early when Executor Palin and the Solarian Counselor caught wind of it. In defense of the plan, the elusive man dispatched his top assassins, commanded by Kai Lang, Kai Lang, to kill them. Udina had little choice but to support the assassins with an armed sort force sufficient to hold the Citadel. Captured confidants have indicated that Udina and Lang's alliance was relatively fragile. Udina may have planned to turn on Cerberus once the fleet was his to command, and Lang departed when he calculated that Udina would not succeed. Persistent rumors suggest that Udina might have been a high-functioning victim of Reaper indoctrination. His actions played right into the Reaper's plans. Even if the coup failed, it would damage Citadel governance. If it succeeded, his plan to retake Earth would likely have turned into a military blunder that Council forces could ill afford. However, there is no direct evidence of his indoctrination, nor obvious opportunity. It is more likely that Udina acted out of desperation, and in doing so, cost humanity its counselor. Yeah, it's a weird... It was a weird-ass choice that he did. That he made. Like, it doesn't really make sense for him to have... Uh, Like, it's hard to know what his actual real goal would have been. It just really doesn't make much sense.
Um. Commander Shepard. Let's see. Should I do a variant now? Now hold off on it a little longer. All right, so I will end this episode here a little bit shorter than uh, other episodes have been, which is not uh, a downside. Uh, just so much talking. I was sitting there like, I know, I'll come to the Perseus Vale and I'll do the Geth Dreadnought. I should have time for that. And then everybody wanted to talk to me. Just, jeez, give me two minutes to myself. Um, but anyway, uh, regardless, a lot of uh, really interesting conversations here. Um uh, Some uh, cool developments for certain characters. Uh, so, James being uh, N7, and uh, we got Caden back, we got Tally back. So now we can do whatever we want to. Yeah, like I said, I'll... when I do those missions, I'll uh, read their descriptions. All right. So next episode, I will do the Geth Dreadnought. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. But for now, thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next episode.